Hello, this is Michael Trayvon's RV Center here to congratulate you on your Catalina Legacy 323 QBTS travel trailer. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A few things to take into consideration when you're parking. On your campsite, you've got a slide and an awning. More room for that awning to come out than the slide. On your off campsite, besides your slides, I also want you to think about where your power and water connection is going to be. Both are going to be right above your tires, right above your back tire on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. Power and city water connection will plug in right there, so park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once we arrive and unhook our hitch, first thing we do is level our unit. The unit comes with a power tongue jack. Simply raise or lower the unit to your level. Do you have a night docking light should you arrive at night? Um, if for some chance you lose power, underneath this rubber stopper right here is a spot for a hand crank to get this up and down should you lose power. Speaking of power, check your battery posts every now and then. Make sure them are haven't wiggled loose going down the road. Once we've got our unit level, next thing we're gonna do is stabilize it. Your unit has these scissor jacks on all four corners, three quarter inch hand crank. Bring these down. As I bring them down, I'm gonna recommend stabilizing jack pads. The jack pads are gonna protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot black top in the summer. Better distribute the weight. You can use an impact driver or a drill gun to run these down. I just recommend you slow down when you get to the bottom. Because remember, our unit's already level. We're just bringing these down just until they're taunt to stabilize the unit. Get all four of those down. We can hook up our power and water. Big, long 50 amp cord here. Got this pistol grip. So put it in, say, 11 o'clock. Turn it to noon. Put your black washer on. At the end of this 50 amp cord, uh, you'll have a 50 to 30 amp dog bone that comes in your convenience pack, as well as a 30 to 15 amp reducer that if you need to plug into a 110. All right, you got our power hooked up. Let's hook up your water. At campsites, we're gonna hook up to city water connection. Just below our power cord here. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in the unit. I always use this because you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. Hook that up. Hook up your hose. If you don't turn your hose on yet, let's find your hot water heater. Yours is located over on the campsite, just to the left of your entry doorway. And all we're doing at this point, folks, is making sure our drain plug's back in there. Throw some plumber's tape around that, not putty, putty will gum up on you. Get some plumber's tape around that, get that in there nice and snug, then you can go ahead and turn that water on. After that water's been on for a few minutes, we're gonna come up beside the unit and open up our unit so that we can get to all of our water lines. Open up these water lines in your kitchen, in the bathroom, get all the air out of the lines, get a nice steady flow of water going through them. Shut them off and then you're all set for city water. You can't get away, we're just opening up this slide for now. Why do you hear that noise? It's just a, the slide mechanism telling you that it's all the way open. I will open up these other slides in a moment, but you just want to get in here and get your water lines opened up. Again, get all the air out of the lines, get a steady flow of water, shut them off, and you're all set to camp. Now let's say we're going to go camping, and we're not going to use city water. We're going to go out dry camping. Some people call it boondocking. In that case, we're going to fill up our fresh water tank, which is in front of our slide over here. No need for a water pressure regulator here. Simply gravity fill it with a hose. Two ways to tell it's full. One, there's overflow valve right here. Or two, on the inside where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks, there's also a fresh water button. Keep an eye on it when you're filling it up. Once it's full, remove that hose, put that cap back on, and then whenever you want to utilize that water, you'll turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when hooked up to the city water. That is already pressurized. 
All right, we're all set to camp. With power and water. Let me walk you around the rest of the outside of the unit. Off campsite here, we've got our big pass-through storage. Our fresh water. Here's where you plug in the cable at campsites. Fresh water drain. Sewage outlet and wastewater. So underneath here, those will be easier to get to when we're leaving the campsite and closes the slide up. Power, city water. This is where your hand crank can get through there to manually open and close the slide again, should you lose power. So you just flare slide toppers up top. Uh, you prep for a backup camera. You purchase a device that um, at one part attaches here, the other part attaches to your dash, your tow vehicle, giving you a backup camera for the unit. Spare tire, accessory hat, uh, rack, tailgate storage. There's all cotter pins to bring them down. Got an outdoor shower, hot and cold water. Spray port area here. Here's where your shower handle can fit. Leash link. Tie your pet up out here. Quick connect LP and low point drains. In our outdoor kitchen. Main thing I want to mention out here. Both of these down at the same time will open this up. You can travel with this flipped upside down as well. There's your hose for your quick connect spray port right there. On these drawers, make sure you lift them before pulling them out. Otherwise, when you pull them out, you're gonna you know, hurt the bottom of them. So just lift them up as you put them on. Electric fridge, the 110 hook up for that up there. Continuing down our campsite, make sure you lock these when you travel too. Your black tank flush, we'll talk about that when clearing out the black tanks. If you want to put a TV over on this side, there's your 110 and cable hook up for that. Flue for your furnace, a couple things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. Two, if you are running your furnace, steer clear of it, it gets hot. And they actually sell bug guards for these as well. There's a vent for your hood vent. Your hot water heater again if it's not working come out here to see if either one of these are bubbled up if they are simply press them back down they are a reset your electric element is set to off you want to keep this off and always turn on your hot water heater indoors the only time you ever turn this on out here is if you're hooked up to 110. again your hole for your manual override on your slide our stairs, outdoor speakers, run the on and out in a moment. Your hitch work on your off campsite. Solar controller. The whole purpose of this is to make sure that your um, solar panels do not overcharge your batteries. Speaking of batteries, again, check your battery post now and then. Propane, point it toward the tank you wish to be using. Lefty Lucy to open. Turn it time back up to it and it will turn green means it's full red means it's empty your battery disconnect this will disconnect all the battery power to the unit that'll come important later when i talk about your carbon monoxide and propane detector that covers everything out here could take a look on the inside coming up beside the unit just want to mention any steps bring them up or down make sure your exterior door is all the way open First thing I like to point out is your fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone at camp with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Come straight up to our control panel. Turn on some lights. Interior, exterior, which is your awning. We'll run that awning out. On your awning. So only run that out again until you see that flap fall down to 90 degrees. You can see your bar. If I hold that down, it will run itself up onto itself and start to run itself up backwards. So only hold it down as far as you need to. Keep only running it out as far as you need to. As I run that back in, again, our slide controls, we'll run the rest of them out here in a moment. Up top is where you can see the level of your fresh tank, black gray tanks, your battery. To the right is where you connect your Bluetooth to. Interior and exterior lights. 
another spot to turn on your water pump and a spot to turn on your water heater and as your awning comes in I will shut off my exterior lights and tell you that slam locks work best when gently slammed again our uh, fire extinguisher over here is going to be our 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector that's always running off your battery so if you are out dry camping and you're going to be gone for the day and you don't want this to drain your batteries down go ahead and use that battery disconnect up front to keep this from running your battery down come back up here and open up our other slides slide number two we're going to hit out which is going to be our bedroom slide back there Slide three, that's going to be our campsite slide. Your other bedroom slide back there. There's a film on here, you can peel all that off once this becomes yours. You can pretty much hear it from here. Again, you hear the little Sounds like a grinding noise, but it's actually nothing grinding. Yeah, your self-explanatory microwave. Light and fan above our cooktop. This is a battery disconnect for your fridge. Say you want to defrost your fridge, you don't want to shut off all your power. You can shut that off here as we turn your fridge on. Uh, cooktop. This glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Turn the light back on here. Simply just turn this to high, hit your spark, push it in, and that's how those light. Same thing on your oven. Turn it to the to light, which is here. Hit your spark, that will light it. Um, and then turn it to the desired temperature. You watch over here and you'll see it go to your temperature. Access panel to your water lines right here. Fridge does have a lock. Electric fridge there. Come down the hallway. Here's your thermostat. I'll go ahead and turn your air on real quick. Get that tank up. That has a quick, quick dump as well. When you push that back in, it really blasted out these. And you pull that back out, lessens it there, and blast it right down in here in the middle of the living room. I always want that down when you're traveling. So let's shut the uh, air off. Generally, they shut up pretty quick. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to turn on your furnace. Now you're here when I shut the furnace off. Generally it takes a few minutes for those fans to cycle through before they shut off Circling back around here in the living room down here. We've got breaker box and fuses a ton of 15s in there Highly recommend having those with you when you go camping 110 there your tabletop will simply lift straight up Remove your metal bars put your tabletop down onto these lay uh, wooden pieces put these cushions on top and it's going to give you a whole nother sleeping quarters. You've got a cup holder here and or another place to storage and sleep. You want to make sure this bed is up. Sofa is up into the sofa position before you bring your slides in. I'm not sure if it has enough room, but I recommend bringing it in. TV here. Remote should be down here. When you arrive at the campsites, go into your um, menu, scan through, pick up your local channels. <laughs> if 
this is for your awning you can change the colors on that this is for your fireplace which I'll mention real quick hand controls here so I can go through and show you all the pretty colors but that's not what these are about nowadays these are about the heat if you're at a campsite and for high if you're at a campsite and it's chilly in the morning or evening instead of using your gas on your furnace crank up this heater on this thing and it will get it toasty in here in no time Now your sound system over here, touch that once, turn that on, uh, dual zone speakers, indoors, outdoors, um, AM, FM, Bluetooth, AM, FM, Bluetooth, here's our modes, Bluetooth compatible, auxiliary, and FM. I'm back into our bedroom. One ten some charging ports on the side. Got a separate TV back here. Storage under your bed. It's your TV box. This back bedroom remote will be in the closet back here. We shut these bedroom lights off and head on back to our bunk room. Lights to our left as we come in. So individual lighting in here. A bed that will fold down by unlocking here. I'm gonna have that up before bringing your slide in. Have a table that will lift up as well. One more TV back here. Again, individual lighting's here. Here, charging port. These will actually fold right out into a big queen mattress if you want to, or leave them in gaming style. This will fold up and lock up here, giving you a little more headroom down here. I recommend traveling with it down though. Thing over here, traveling with this one up and locked in on both ends. Less bouncing on those. Again, individual lighting. We do have a hand crank vent here, no exhaust fan to it, but nice little airflow through here. A door that you want snapped open for travel. Lastly, our bathroom. A little more plumbing to maintain. Keep an eye on that. Access panel there. Like I said, it's mostly PEX nowadays. Easy to maintain. Just if you travel with this a lot and bounce it down the road a lot, you just want to keep an eye on things. 110 with GFCI reset. You do have a hand crank open exhaust vent here. And that about covers everything in here. So act like we're leaving the campsite and closing the unit up. So if I show off my main light, I can see everything else that's accent lighting. Again, back here, make sure your table is up. And that is up so nothing's going to impede our slides from coming in. Make sure all those doors are closed. Shut that light off. Check my bathroom light. All off. Vent closed. So now I'll come to the control panel, shut off my interior lights, and then I can see all the little accent lights I need to walk through and shut off. And lastly, let me show you this one working. Lastly, I'm going to say doors and drawers. So after you have all the accent lights off, come back to the control panel, turn on your interior lights that you'll be able to shut off when you walk out, and say doors and drawers again. Walk through the unit. Make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to impede our slides from coming in. Those doors are closed so that that slide doesn't catch it. And just start bringing our slides in. We'll start with number three, our back bedroom one.
another vent to make sure you have closed. Our other bedroom slide. And lastly, our living room slide. You got a bag of paperwork. Go through it, get to know all your appliances, register some. Uh, there may be warranties on there that are extended beyond uh, what you've gotten with the company. So just go through your paperwork. You own a new mini home, get to know this. So up my interior lights and exit the unit. Now the biggest thing on these steps, again, make sure this exterior door is all the way open, otherwise this can catch on it when they come up. Feet are also adjustable with a cotter pin. Lock that in. Before you leave the dump station, and I say that in case you get in, you want to go inside and check the levels as you're dumping them. Uh, after you leave the dump station, lock, deadbolt, lift and turn this handle that's how you want that to travel all right if we are out dry camping we're gonna bring up our stabilizing jacks come over here and open up that fresh water drain and either head home or to the nearest dump station whatever we're in need of if we're at a campsite we're gonna hook our power our water our cable bring up our stabilizing jacks hook up our hitch and head on up to the dump station now at the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump is going to be right in front of your tires on your off-camp side. Take the 10-foot hose comes to your convenience pack, hook that up, the other end in the sewage dump, and pull your black handle. And it sounds like it's no longer draining. Go inside, check the levels of your black tanks. If it's showing almost empty or empty, Come back out, leave that black handle open, grab the hose at your dump station, and come over here and hook it up to this black tank flush. Again, emphasizing tank flush valve has to be all the way open. Let that run for a good five minutes. That's gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, put that back on, remove your hose, put that back on. Come back over, make sure all that wash out that you've put in there has drained out. When that's done, Go ahead and close that black handle and pull your gray handle. And while my grays are draining, I'm going to do a couple of things. First thing I'm going to do is come around here and open up my low point drains. Right there. Get those dumped out. If I'm done camping for the season, or for a little while, and I don't want to leave no stagnant water in here, I come to my hot water heater, lift up on this pressure release valve. That's going to get all that nastiness, or uh, all that hot water out of there, so be careful. Once that's done, put that back down, otherwise your door won't close. And then pull that drain plug down there for residual hot water. Make sure you close this up good for traveling. When that gray is done, So close that gray handle, remove this. Remember, that's gonna be cleaner water, so that'll be clean your sewage hose out for you. But then we're gonna store it in a nice sanitary and convenient place, and your bumper makes a good one. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this Catalina for many years to come. Happy camping.